So as soon as that goes on, what does China do on the 25th? China flies over Taiwan, nine jets. That's a provocation because what they know that the United States cannot fight over there. We just got our Afghanistan with our head down and our tails between our legs. They know that the United States can't fight Russia and then over here fight China too. So we need to pray that nothing jumps off with China and Taiwan. But we know from the scriptures that China has to emerge as a superpower, and so is Russia. So that's why when we look at the scriptures, we can see, oh, I see how these things are working out. But now with that said, you got the game in the middle when you're playing chess. You got the game over here where you're moving bishops and, and rooks and pawns, and you got the game over here where you're trying to fake them out by moving something over here. But then you got the middle game. Because the whole game of chess, all my chess players know what I'm talking about, is controlled by the four center squares in the middle of the board. Even checkers, but the four squares. Whoever controls the middle controls the whole game. So Psalm 83 gives us a coalition of people that are going to come against Israel. Now, I bring this up. I hope, uh, hope uh, you're still with me. But I bring this up because Russia has been allowing Israel to claim the Golan Heights, which is right there in the middle, and allowing Israel to fly its jets, even though Syria is a sworn enemy of Israel. But Russia has gone in and established military bases in Syria, and they are allowed, up until to this present day, up until yesterday, they are allowing Israel to fly and patrol the Golan Heights. But now Russia is saying that don't belong to Israel because it belongs to Syria, because Russia is in Syria, uh, uh, helping Fassad al-Ashad and his wicked regime, and they've been laid back until now. Here's what I'm trying to get you to see, that more than likely, as the United States focuses on Ukraine, which is in the east, Russia's next move is going to be to put pressure on Israel. Watch and see. Now, everybody's trying to see if Russia's going to back down because they put these sanctions against them where it's making food and petrol off the chain. But don't think that they have made all of this move just to pack the tanks up and their 190,000 men and go back to the house and just say, well, we couldn't do it. No, they're going to make another move. And what I'm saying to you, for those of you who, who eschatology, uh, excitable. And we don't just putting this out here that thus said the Lord. But these are things we need to watch. Watch and see if China doesn't start some mess because Russia and China sit down together, have dinner. Watch and see if China don't start some mess and watch and see if Russia doesn't put pressure on Israel to say, if you're going to fool with us over here, America, we're going to make you have to come and help Israel too. Do you see, if something breaks off in, in the Middle East with Israel and something breaks off into China, the United States may as well be toast. It's over. That's why we look up and say, Jesus must be coming soon. All you Christians who talk about the rapture, I'm going to be out of here for the, for you. okay, but well, this is the moment here. See, I've been in this a long time. They was talking the Lord coming in the rapture in 1976 when I got saved, full of the Holy Ghost. And we used to have rapture drills. Some of y'all wasn't born. And, and Hal Lindsey hadn't wrote the great, late great pan of earth yet. But here's what's going on right now. We've come to the time 
where all it would take is another incident. They're already talking World War III. United States is neutralized. So all this going to church and you, you don't want to go to church and you don't, all that, you know, all that, all that's just the enemy's distraction, the way I see it. You know, because God is trying to do something bigger than buildings. He's trying to save, not trying, he's going to save people everywhere. Amen. See? So it's the whole earth is shaking. Now, I want you to read Psalm 83 here. Now, that's a lot of information, but we're going we're to look at a couple scriptures here. And somebody said, well, uh, suppose it don't happen. Well, the one thing we know is going to happen is what we're reading in this Bible. So we're going to read Psalm 83, and I want you to see. At one, though. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's go to, uh, yeah, let's go to one. We're just going to read, and, and uh, I'll uh, help to interpret this as we go. Okay. Yeah. Keep not, then, keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies have make a make a tumult, and they that have the have lifted up their heads, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden orders, hidden ones. They have they have said, "Come, let us cast cut cut them out of the cut them off from being a nation, and the nation of Israel." May be no more in remembrance. Okay, what's going on as the, the psalmist is, is writing here? This is a prayer. And verse 3 says that they have taken crafty counsel against our people. So that's what the United Nations does. And so uh, if you look at that map, all of these uh, places around Israel, including Egypt and Libya, uh, we're going to see some of the names here in a minute. These places have taken crafty counsel against Israel to cut them off from being a nation. Now, notice that Golan Heights, they are surrounded. They are surrounded. That's the contested area right there. That's the buffer zone between Israel that's on your left and Syria. Israel wants to hold on to the Golan Heights like Russia wants to hold on to Ukraine. The reason Russia wants to hold on to Ukraine is it puts a buffer between Russia and Europe. See, Lithuania, Estonia, those places have already fallen. Georgia, uh, Russia came in and took those little bitty tiny states and made them part of the old Soviet Republic. But what Russia is saying that over our dead body, would Ukraine become part of NATO? Why? For the same reason on this map, Israel wouldn't want that to bel belong to Syria. Because they're saying, if Russia's in Syria, all the way over here to the Golan Heights there, mm -hmm. they can put nuclear weapons yeah. right across the street from your border. I mean, you know, you live in a city that one side is city A and the other side is city B. That's what, the, that's what a border is. So if Israel loses the Golan Heights, that puts uh, beside them right at Israel's border, which is on the left side of the Golan Heights. They can have SAM, surface to air missiles. They can have ICBMs. They can make sure they got stuff that ain't going to fall short, but going to hit Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. So that's one reason why Israel's in a pickle right now. But Russia is using the same uh, mindset when it comes to Ukraine, saying that if they became NATO, that means they can put nuclear weapons all the way up to the border. Now, what does that look like? The United States, we've got Canada to the north, we've got Mexico to the south. I guarantee you, this is why I know something's going to jump off. I guarantee you that if... Any country, China or Russia, put nuclear bombs in Canada, this whole country would be on alert. Right, it's true. They'd be issuing out guns to us from the pawn shops. You know, you can just go in there and they'll give you one. If they did the same thing in Mexico, the United States military and the people would be on high alert. Because we're saying, 
how can we let you put uh, weapons of mass destruction as far as Tijuana, as far as Juarez, Mexico, just on the other side of Arizona, just on the other side of Texas, past Corpus Christi, and you got weapons? No. So that's why I don't agree with Mr. Putin, but I, that's why you know that we're in a dangerous place and Europe is doing what they're doing because this, ain't, this is not an average uh, setup here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, but let's look at the, uh, the Israel here in the middle here. Uh, go to verse uh, 6. Uh, 6 through uh, 8, my brother. Okay. Uh, 6 through 8, yes. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagranes, Gibel and Ammonon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria is also joined with them. They have hoping the children of the lot. Selah. Okay. So these are the nations that are surrounding uh, Israel. But I'm, I'm looking here uh, because I want to give you the modern day names of those nations that are surrounding uh, Israel right now. What the Bible says uh, that these are the nations that are going to come against Israel. And these are the modern day nations that are in existence now. Uh, so, Israel is the only democratic uh, republic in the Middle East. If you look at a map, that uh, when you find Israel, you're going to find one little red dot because all the other nations are either Arab or they are against uh, Israel. So let's see here. And please excuse me taking time here. Uh, but I want to I wanna give you this. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Okay, so. He says in verse number six, for they have conspired together, they make a covenant against you. And that means against Israel. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, even Moab and the Hagrites, um, and Ammon. And actually, that's not what I want, but uh, I'm going to have to find it here. We'll move on, and I'll find it here. But here's what you should know, that the nations that are coming against Israel, they are proxy nations for Russia, Iran, and Turkey, which are the nations that are written in Ezekiel 38. So let's go there while I find the name of those nations. We're going to go to Ezekiel 38. See, Russia and Iran have never been friends until in this last decade. And there used to be people that say, I don't see how Russia and Turkey and Iran going to ever get, get along together. But now they're getting along together because they are the nations that Ezekiel 38 talks about. And even though Turkey is a part of NATO, Turkey has been on the fence as to whether remaining in NATO. So NATO, as we know, is the uh, armies of the European, the European armies and the United States and Canada and Australia, Great Britain. 30 nations, they make up NATO. Well, Russia and Iran are written here in the Bible. So my brother, if you don't mind, read uh, Ezekiel 38 and... Let's read the first four verses. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to read Ezekiel 39, uh, verse uh, down to verse 8. So okay. you got a lot of reading to do. Okay. And the words of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the 
the land of Magog, and the chief prince of Meshech and Tabla, and prophesied against him, and said, This says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, O God, the chief princes of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn them back and put hooks into their jaws, and I will bring these, bring these forth, and all thy armies, horses, and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with buckles and, sh and shields, all of them handing swords. Mm -hmm. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomar and all his hands, the house of uh, Telugar of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with them. Okay. So what verse you're in? I'm in seven right now. Yeah, let's go to 39, one through eight. One through eight? Mm-hmm. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, this says the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, but I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and I will cause thee to come upon the, earth, the north parts and bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the the, the ravelous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Okay. Now, what this proves by the word that Iran and Russia are going to be major powers in this last day. And, and that's a, another one I forgot to mention. We need to pay attention to the fact that Iran is still trying to recover from the, the thing that Trump knocked them out of. Remember the, uh, so that they yeah, can get their new... The, uh, nuclear. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you got. <laughs> yeah, get their nuclear power okay. plant going, and you know Trump, he he shut that down, but and, and then uh, Obama gave them flew a jet plane over there mm -hmm. with stacks of money, a bunch of millions of dollars, just cash, mm -hmm. and uh, so anyway, but Iran is trying to get uh, nuclear ready, but. Make no mistake about it, Ezekiel 38 and 39 lets us know that Iran and Russia and Turkey are going to be players in this final stage. Uh, I won't be able to pull it up on a map right here, but if you would look at the map, you would find that it's, uh, Psalm 83, the nations that it talks about, is Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and Qatar, Egypt, Libya, uh, Ethiopia, and Iran. These are uh, the nations that are going to come against Israel. And if you look at a map they, and find Jerusalem, they circle Jerusalem. Jerusalem or Israel is in the center of the earth. It's the center. It's where God's going to establish his capital. It's where Jesus is going to come back. He, uh, he was here once, but he's coming back too. So it's the center. Right now, Russia is having massive drills in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. Over 30 warships, planes that can carry uh, nuclear warheads, they're all practicing right there in the Middle East, just miles from Israel's shore. So... We see these things, and we don't go underground and just, well, our greatest concern is what we're going to eat today. We need to understand that in order to be relevant believers, what God has done, I believe, is shifted us from just being so building-focused, which we should come and learn, but to be globally focused. Because when you go to heaven you're not going to be segregated over here with the people that you knew on earth, right. see? And when we pray for the earth, we're actually praying uh, uh, in the way God wants us to pray, see? And 
Uh, but these nations are surrounding Israel. They are sworn enemies, and we just read it. Their uh, motto is, come, let us stop Israel from being a nation. Now, we know that since 1948, Israel became a nation. In 67, Jerusalem became the capital city. Over 2,000 years, they were dispersed. But the one thing we know, and we heard uh, the prime minister say, we ain't ever leaving no more. You know, you could only kick me out my house so many times, but this time, we ain't leaving. So we know that Christ is soon to return. Amen. Russia, Iran, and Turkey right now are together. And then China. And then India is also on that side. India has nuclear weapons and is a sworn enemy of Pakistan. So what the world is doing right now is lining up east against west. And, but we Christians, man, we need to focus because our job is to pray without ceasing, get your family saved, get your life right. Uh, yeah, go to church, you know, whatever it takes to keep you focused, come out of sin, uh, put away evil, uh, call upon the Lord, seek him. Because the biggest mistake Americans make is that we are never going to see any days of trouble and destruction. That's the biggest mistake we made. We have moved from COVID now to being on the brink of World War III as of February 24th. A year ago, two years ago, COVID was dominating. But they're saying now you can start taking your mask off. In school, you know, it's 70% of America now saying, hey, we're good. But we got another catastrophe. And that's a world war. And so what are we to do? Telling family members who say, well, I've, I've been one of these days. One of these days has come. Brother, help me out here. I know I'm, I'm saying a lot, but I'm really serious about this. What do you think? Well, uh, like he said again, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, a lot of movement, you know, with Iran and all the, everybody, China, all the different things. But we know that the, at the end, at the end game or the checkmate is it's all about Israel. Yes. And they saying that they want to take them out and all that. We know that that's what that's what the books lean to. We that's already right. know that. That's right. And we know that he comes back and be the victor and the winner of that. Amen. But we know that these things are lining up. And I, 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 what I think I'm hearing you saying is that, you know, it, it, just like with COVID, we think that it was just over over there in China or whatever, but then it started affecting everybody. That's right. And what you're saying is that is we as a as a body we need to be uh, you know go be minded, kingdom minded, like you, what you were saying, Amen. kingdom minded, instead of just being uh, you know self centered and you know that's just the flesh anyway. We, me and mine, me and you know me and mine, I'm everybody. But we need to be right. as as children of we supposed to be the children of the light. We're not the ones that's in the dark. We're supposed right. to be, like, I thank God for the word that he gives us, that give us discernment. He gives us what's coming ahead. And he said, dig it not these strange, these strange, these things that are coming upon us. So it's not something that overtaking you because we're turning on the light. We're supposed to understand these things. But at the same time, God is calling us to, just like with Abraham, to intercede for the nation. You know, Amen. For, even uh, what, for, uh, what, uh, for Solomon and Gomorrah. Yes, yes, he said, you know, these things. He, he said he was checking out to see what's going on. Yes, he knows that he's the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. But, he was, but at the same time, he wanted the ones to intercede for the, he said what the He said the earth is the Lord and the fools thereof and the people dwell, dwell in. He said, you know, he, he loves the people. But like I said, a lot of people don't want to submit themselves to God, resist, resist themselves to the, to, they want to do their own thing, they, you know, instead of the will of God. But anyway, but God is, what God is trying to do is, um, but he's letting him know that he's the, we know he's the victor, but we need to, as a body, we need to intercede. You, we need to, I guess he said the mature saints know what's going on and they intercede. You know, they're not about themselves, you know. And so we, we you know, we're supposed to use the weapons of our warfare because he said, you know, of course, he's talking about the weapons of, you know, of, of mass destruction, those natural weapons. Mm -hmm. We know that Israel went in with natural weapons, but now we are in a spiritual warfare, and we have the authority that we have, and we need to intercede, just like with Abraham. He, he, he got him down. He, uh, God forbid that it was less than 10 people that, you know, that he had to destroy the city. Mm -hmm. But we, we have to intercede and stand in the gap. Amen. We have to intercede, and we have to, not just for this nation, but uh, like you were saying beforehand, 
our brothers and sisters, our mother, our father, mm -hmm. you know, those, let them know that Jesus is, is coming right. and, and they need to re repent and turn to him. Amen. And so, yeah. but yeah. But you we can't use the excuse, I go to church. Oh, no, that's church, not that's not good enough. No, church is not church is not the building. You know, yeah. he, we said we are the church, and he, he's making us the church. Right. And so it's not, you know, it's not a, you know, like I said, it's, not, it's a relationship thing. You know, a lot of people say they know. It's just like I think about this. You know, when um, um, what's the name was here? Uh, Westbrook. You know, Westbrook was one of the ones back. At, you know, back in play for the play for our, our basketball team. Nobody they know of Westbrook. Yeah, that's my team. That's Westbrook. You know. But they never sat down and fellowship with him. They never sat there and, and he told him about his stuff with his family or he told him, you know, the things Amen. that he, his dreams or his desires, how he wanted to get a championship. You know, they just know him. Yeah, that's, 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 that's ours. But no, and, and God is saying that he wants fellowship. He wants you to seek his face while Amen. he may be found. Yes, sir. And so, and so that's, where, that's, that's the point. And, and he said our redemption is drawing nigh. He said, mm -hmm. you know, he, the enemy knows his time is running out. That's right. And so we didn't know, we really need to know and discern the season and the time. That's what I think the yeah. eschatology is season and time discernment yeah. of what's going on so we can be ready. Amen. And so. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons, oh, brethren, you have no yeah, need yeah. that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. And so this is part of that looking up for the redemption draw at night because the day of the Lord, that's when the Lord uh, comes, comes like a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, mm -hmm. then sudden destruction come upon, upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. See, uh, we can't escape because we live in America. Matter of fact, the biggest target, there are more missiles uh, pointed toward America than anywhere else. Yeah. Russia has yeah. missiles pointed yeah. toward us. They have over 6,000 uh, warheads. China has uh, uh, missiles pointed toward us. North Korea has missiles pointed toward us. Uh, not to even mention uh, Iran, who calls us the great Satan. The first thing they're going to do when they get uh, Good, yeah. their deal is to get a missile point at us and point at Israel. Verse 3 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. That's the whole point, that as believers we are light, as my brother said. We are not in darkness. We should watch and see these things just like, uh-oh, time is winding up. Instead of 